Today we're going to talk about the top 5 must have cards for any blue deck that you're trying to build in the Digimon card game. Digimon fans, welcome back to another top list video where I'll be showing you guys what the top 5 must have cards or even staple cards for any blue deck that you're trying to build for the Digimon TCG in 2023. Keep in mind this is my very own list based on my personal opinion and all the cards I included of the time of making this video. The cards that we're going to be talking about will be specific to blue only, which means I will not include generic cards that come in multiple colors like memory boosts, hybrids, and effect blockers, and so on just like my top 5 red staples video which I did recently. Speaking of which though, we actually covered some of those cards in my other top 6 must have staple cards for 2023 and takes in consideration for all the colors in the game. So if you haven't checked out those two videos yet then be sure to do so as well. I will leave a link on the iCard on the top right and in the description box down below. There is no particular order once again where these staples rank but they would certainly be helpful for any of you guys who want to optimize your blue base decks so let's just jump right into it. I am also super excited to announce a new feature on my channel where I launched my very first ever YouTube membership called the Evolt Club. By joining you will have access to exclusive perks and contents that regular viewers don't have. Perks include the Evolt Club membership badge and the best part is that you'll be able to see members only community posts featuring my first draft deck profiles even before the video comes out. You will see more updates by me for every deck profile release and even updated deck lists and adjustments with all the lists. Your comments and questions will also have priority replies from me. So what are you guys waiting for? Click on the join button right now. Thank you all so much for the support and I look forward to engaging with you guys. So to start off for our very first card, we have Upamon Digi Egg from BT1. Upamon provides an inheritable of your turn once per turn when attacking. If your opponent has a Digimon with no sources, you get to draw a card. Like I mentioned in many of my videos and all my deck profiles, draw power is always great. Having to dig deeper into your deck and find pieces to build towards your combos after is always priority. Many decks often enough would hard play rookies to search for specific cards from the top of the deck, which then lets you easily meet Upamon's requirements very quickly. And that is why Upamon's inherited effect is generic enough to definitely have a 4 copies of each, especially when you're not too sure what is a very clear indicator to which blue egg you should run. Furthermore, blue is known to strip Digivolution sources off your opponent's Digimon every now and then depending on the type of deck, and some decks would actually have it as their main strategy too and that would give those decks even greater synergy alongside with Upamon. The second card I want to talk about is Hammer Spark. This card was first introduced in the Kokaida's Blue Starter deck, being one of the very first few options introduced into the card game. It was also then later reprinted in the O4's Vigimon Starter deck set, which is Starter Deck 8. This card was also reprinted with all arts in the Tamer's Evolution box and the Championship pack for participating in the 2021 Nationals. What Hammer Spark does is simply it gives you one memory for zero cost to play the option. More memory means more cards you can play and it means more cards you can use for the turn 2. I would normally recommend 4 copies of this card to always have just in case, but with more cards that are being released for the game and more decks being archetype based, there have been more different ways to gain memory which diminishes the need of having 4 copies of Hammer Spark. Nowadays, some blue decks would even play just only 2 or none at all. But like I said, I think having a playset is still very good just in case because it can always be very useful to have its security effect. And now speaking of which, it does have a security effect which simply gains you 2 instant memory. Other than viewing Hammer Spark as an offensive card to let you play more during your turn, it can also be viewed as a very good defensive card, and in some situations it can arguably be one of the best defensive cards for blue. And that is because gaining 2 memory during your opponent's turn when it gets checked in security can potentially limit their line of place for the rest of the turn or even shut off their entire turn because the memory gauge could pass to your side after gaining the 2. And this will immediately end their turn. This can turn the tables instantly from a losing situation for you back into a winning one. And these are the major reasons why I think Hammer Spark is such a versatile card itself. Next up we have Hammer Spark's cousin or brother which some of you guys might call it. And this is where we're going to be talking about Ice Wall. And this card came out from the EX1 Classic Collection set. 
Why are they closely so related? Well, that is because ice wall's security effect is exactly the same as hammer sparks. But it has a very different main effect, where for one memory cost, it makes all your opponent's Digimon gain when attacking, lose two memory for their next turn, which means whenever they attack you during that next turn, they will have to pay two memory in order to do so. This is also a blanket effect, which applies towards any Digimon that comes out from raising, or any new Digimon being played or digivolved during that turn too. Ice Wall can effectively stall your opponent out for one whole turn, and it gives you an opportunity to clap back aggressively when it comes back to your turn afterwards. Can you imagine a time where you can play 4 copy of Ice Walls and 4 copy of Hammer Sparks in your deck, and how obnoxious it could be? Well, that sure did happen back in the BT6 and EX1 format where Gabu Bond was abusing them like crazy. And this is exactly why Ice Wall at 4 was very short lived, and it got hit on the restriction list down to 1 very, very quickly. Therefore, one copy is really all you need, but it's still definitely a must have in most blue decks. Even today, many blue decks would still play a combination of 1 Ice Wall and 2 copies of Hammer Spark, mostly as their defensive approach to help them protect themselves against other matchups. For the fourth card on the list, we have Davis from BT3. First and foremost, Davis is a memory tamer which is incredibly important for most decks. Once again, we did mention the importance of having memory tamers in our top 6 staples video and today we're going to go more in depth to why Davis is the best blue tamer as of today. This card was so good and such a heavily required staple for all blue decks during a time period that the price of this card shot up so high, making it one of the most expensive rares of all time. Thankfully, this card was reprinted with a spectacular new artwork from the Jessmon and Ragnar Larvon starter decks, starter deck 12 and 13, as the bonus set of reprinted tamers that came along with it. Davis on play searches for the top 3 cards of your deck and lets you add one blue and one green Digimon card among them to your hand and places the rest to the bottom. Davis is one of the main reasons why blue decks are insanely consistent when it comes to searching. It is super helpful in finding your combo pieces to build your stacks or plays and find the cards that you need for further optimization. The best value comes in with the decks that play both blue and green colors, so you can potentially hit two targets and searching such as Imperial German, which is what this card is mainly intended for. And of course, it's also been played in the most recent Examon as well because there's just a lot of great synergy. I also saw Davis being played in green decks such as Grandis Kuragamon to boost the efficiency of searching for some of them as well. Most blue decks play a range from 1 to 3 copies which really comes down to your personal play style and how much you prioritize consistency and search power for your deck. Therefore, I would recommend 4 copies of this card just in case if you ever actually want to play or experiment with a full play set in your build to really, really maximize your searching consistency. Last but not least, for the final card we got today, we have Kokaida's Breath. Just like Hammer Spark when it was first printed from the Kokaida's Blue starter deck, this card is known to be the generic go-to removal card for most blue decks. This card only received an alt art reprint from the Tamers Evolution Box and Championship Pack just like Hammer Spark. And I think it will be very good for this card to be reprinted soon as well. Because for a cost of 7 memory, you get to return one of your opponent's Digimon back to their hand with no other restrictions. Playing this card from your hand at the right time can greatly benefit you the game situation or especially when it comes out from security for free. Most blue decks would only run one or two copies of this card as sort of like their tech removal unless you plan to play Beal Starmon or some form of blue security control deck, then I would recommend getting a playset. Now we'll wrap up for the top 5 must have blue cards for the Digimon card game. If you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please give it a like. What do you guys think about the list that I came up with? Are there any other cards that I missed or some cards you guys would actually suggest and consider to be as must have staples for blue color decks? Then be sure to share your thoughts with me and everyone else in the comment section down below. Once again, if you guys haven't checked out the other staple cards discussion videos on the channel, then be sure to do so. And of course, we'll be covering the other remaining colors in future videos as well. So if you guys are just as excited for those videos to come, then be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you next video. And this is Vault, signing out.